Hello there, my lovebirds on the internet. Today, we are gonna create this page transition effect. Now, if you're like me, when I first got started into web development, this was the number one effect I really wanted to learn. And I started searching everywhere, deep in the north, beyond the wall. And when I was done, I finally posted it on all these social medias. And my mom gave it a like, and she was really proud of me, even though she probably had no idea what I just made, but she was proud of me, okay? She was proud of his little creator here. So make your moms proud, and let's get going. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna break it down into two steps, okay? We're gonna start with parcel, which is gonna take care of kind of bundling all of our JavaScript CSS together. And then we're gonna get into the page transition. And the reason why I wanna do this is this package that we're using for page transitions is really modern. So we're gonna use classes and all those syntaxes. And what we can do with parcel is we can uh, kind of take that ES6 code and put it back to ES5, which is the old JavaScript. So just to make sure uh, it's compatible throughout all the browsers. Now, if you've never used Node.js before or NPM, you can get it from nodejs.org and you can download this recommended for users here okay after you install it i have my vs code open here it's empty i just have two images which i'm going to provide in the description so it's going to be a github repo with everything just everything for you set okay uh, and now if we open up go up here and open up the terminal and hit new terminal you should be able to write node dash v and when you hit enter, if it shows up for you, version 10.15, whatever version it is when you're watching this, then everything is good. If it doesn't show up, make sure to write it in the comments and I'll try to help you out because there can be some tricky stuff here. Okay, so what do we do? Well, let's do npm init. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna initiate a package for us where we can download different JavaScript packages so this is kind of a like a document that stores everything for you, okay? And there you can add packages and remove packages. So rather than adding everything in the script like that, we can kind of store everything in something called node modules, which we're gonna see in a second. And then everything is gonna make sense, I promise. So here it's gonna ask us for the package name. For now, you can just hit enter on everything. It doesn't really matter, okay? Enter, enter, enter. And as you can see, it generates this package.json for us. And here, as you can see, uh, we are gonna add, it's under here, it's gonna appear all the packages that we are gonna install. So things like GSAP and Highway, which is a package that we're gonna use for the page transitions, okay? So let's get going. We need parcel, so let's install parcel. The way we can do that is we can write npm install, and now um, if we install it like this, so parcel bundler, okay? If we install it like this, this is gonna be only used in this project. However, so we don't have to do this again in other projects, we can just install this globally. And the way we can do that is write dash G, and then we do parcel bundler, like so. Hit enter, it's gonna install everything nicely and prepare it. So again, now you can just use parcel. You don't have to do this npm installs dash g parcel bundler again ever, okay? You have it installed, everything is good. You can just open up a new project and it's gonna work just fine. But great, after it's done, we can just create our index.html. So let's do that, index.html. We can generate a file like so. And I'm gonna name this homepage for now. And I'm just gonna add hello parcel in here, just a H1, just to kind of demonstrate everything for you. So now what we can do is we can create a folder with JS and we can also create a style folder as well. And in here, we can actually just use a SAS if we want. So let's do style.scss. And if I just do body, and let's just do more, uh, let, let me select and remove all the necessary things that we usually do. So margin zero pixels, we're gonna do padding, zero pixels, I'm not sure why I'm not getting my autocorrect, box sizing, border box, there we go. And yeah, we just have this, and let me create also a JavaScript file here, which I'm gonna call index.js. And in here, Watch this, I'm just gonna create a random function. So const run is gonna be equal to, just to kind of demonstrate what parcel can do for us. Here, I'm just gonna console log 
yo, I am running. All right, so this is an arrow function, which is ES6, so it's super modern. Okay, how do we take everything in here and make it work? All we have to do is call, well, actually, let's link everything in here in HTML, so link, and I'm actually gonna link this style sheet. So style, and I'm gonna link the SCSS here, okay? Not a normal CSS. And down here, I can just link script source. I'll link the index JavaScript here, okay? Now, all I have to do is down here in the terminal, just run parcel index.html. So we're running the HTML. Hit enter, it's gonna do all the magic. It's gonna take all of your SAS and CSS. Look, it's installing SAS and everything is gonna be done automatically. It's gonna take your, your modern code, it's gonna pass it into old code, and look at that. Here in the dist folder, this is what you would use in production. Well, not in production yet, because this is not a production build, but look, it spits out all the files for you. The style files, as you can see, it's now a CSS one. And if we go on this JavaScript file, as you can see, it does a lot of crazy things. But if I search for run here, as you can see, it just makes it into normal JavaScript. So that's really cool. And what it also does is, if we scroll up here in the terminal, it also makes us a server. So if I hold control and click on this, it's gonna open up a live server. And if I modify something here, hit control save, as you can see, it updates and it repackages everything for us. So there we go, that's a super simple way you can get started with Parcel. And I highly, highly recommend you to use this on your next projects. Because what also we can do is we can create multiple JavaScript files and we can separate things. So I'm just gonna do a, a test.js here and I, I can create a test function just to illustrate what I'm trying to say. Console log, this is from the test file, like so. And what we can do here is I can export default test. So I can export default test, this function, hit save, and then go back here, and up above here, I can just import the test from, and I can just navigate to that folder. So now I have test here, and I can run it in here. And if we check, you're gonna see that we can just separate multiple files and we can run them here. All right, so we can delete everything here and this test file. I don't really care about this. There we go. This we're gonna keep and we're gonna add just some basic styling in there. So here, what we, we can do is in the terminal, we can install the necessary packages to do the animations and the page transitions. So hit Control and C, that's gonna exit and terminate this live server. And we're gonna have to hit Y here to say yes, get rid of it. And what we're gonna need to install is a package called npm install gsap, okay? So here, we're not gonna use that global thing we used on Parcel because we just wanted to use on this specific uh, project. So npm install gsap, hit enter. That's gonna generate us it's gonna go on the web, it's gonna find GSAP and it's gonna download it and it's gonna put it in this node modules. So here is where all your packages are. And as you can see, this package.json just kind of keeps a record of all your packages that you have installed in your project. The second package we're gonna have to install is npm install and we're gonna have to do an around symbol dog studio dash highway, okay? npm install doc studio highway hit enter and this is the website if you want to go highway.js.org and if you go on the installation here you're going to see npm install doc studio highway okay perfect we can close this up after it's installed we can get going so we can kind of uh, just start up the parcel and then we can close this terminal and just work normally and it's gonna do everything for us so we don't have to worry about this again so parcel index.html this is gonna start up everything as you can see it's building and we can hold control click on it to open it again there it is I'm gonna close all of these all right now to close this up we can go to the X here and hit close the first thing I want to do is I want to create a nav. So let's create a nav here 
and I'm going to do a nav. I'm going to call a UL, which I'm going to add a class of nav list to this. All right, perfect. Here I'm going to just have an LIA. So I'm just going to have a list of anchor tags. Here I'm going to put the hashtag for now. We're going to leave it empty. I'm going to do home and I'm just going to hold shift alt and press down and do two more. Let's do about and contact here. We're only going to do the page transitions on these two for now. And I want you to try to make the last one. Okay. Here, I'm also going to give the class list of on the anchor tag of nav links. So nav links. All right. We can copy this and paste it right there. And there we go. We have our nav. Now, the way our transition is going to work is we need to make a specific section of our page uh, to transition. So what I mean by that is you can either have the entire body transition or just a specific section on your page. In this case, I kind of want my nav to stay the same. So I kind of only want to transition everything else. So here is going to be the div that's going to be changed and transitioned. So to do that, I'm going to create a main tag here. And here I'm going to create a section with a class of home. So this is the home page. Okay, perfect. And here I'm going to add a home content div like so. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want this to have the background color. And then I want to add an opacity zero to this. And then I want to animate in the content. However, if I would do it on this, then even the background color would, would be not visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a background color to this. And the reason why I again added another div is just so I can add opacity zero and animate this back end. You're going to see it in one second. It's going to make sense, I promise. And in here, I'm just going to have a home presentation. And here I'm just going to add some random text that we saw on the screen. H1 is going to be a seamless transition. And down here, I'm going to add a paragraph that's going to say beautiful transition between HTML pages. Perfect. Outside of this div, we're going to create an image and we're going to add one of the, let's go to images and the home SVG. I'm going to add a home alternative here. So I'm going to display this as flex. So this section and this section would come one next to each other like so. Okay, and that's it here. Now to make to tell Highway JS what we need to change on this page is we're going to go back to our big main section and we're going to add a data router wrapper to this. Okay, and everything that's in this data router <laughs> data router wrapper is going to be switched. Okay, so in our about HTML. We're going to add a data router wrapper again, and then everything in there is basically going to swoop in here. Okay. And the section that's going to be changed needs to have a data router view. And we can set that equal and give it a, a personal name. So we can just add home. So this is the thing that's going to be changed. Now, very important, you cannot have another child here in this data router wrapper. <laughs> I swear to God, if I have to say this word one more time. So we can only have this section in here. Okay, that's something very important to keep in mind. Now let's go to our style.css and make the nav bar. So to do that, all I have to do is get the nav list. Let's do dot nav list like that. I'm going to add the height of 10 VH to this. We're going to add a display flex to this. Let's see how that looks. There it is. All right, I'm going to add a height. Uh, we added the height. Let's add a width of like 50%. We're going to do justify content space around and let's do align items center to put it vertically. Let's go back here. That's what we have. Let's move it to this side of the page and we can do that by adding a margin left of auto. Let's go back. There it is. Beautiful. Let's also remove the text decoration. It's not text decoration. It's list style to get rid of those dots. There we go. And now we can go to the individual nav links. And we can just get rid of that text decoration and say none. Let's take a look. 
All right, we're going to make it a bit bigger. We can also change the color to black. Let's go color black and just font size 18 pixels. Hit save. Take a look. There we go. All right, so we can go on webgradients.com here and select a nice linear gradient. And the one I'm going to use for this is the second one. It's called Night Fade. So we can just copy the CSS here and we can go to the home down here and just add this background image. Now let's take a look and there it is. Now I kind of want to make this 90 VH so we kind of scroll down like so. I want to make it like a an app and I'm going to actually le leave this separate here because I'm going to add a home and an about and we're kind of going to style them the same way. So I'm, I'm just going to make this separate for now from this. All I want to do is add a height of 90 VH to this. I'm going to add a position absolute because we're going to do some animations with this and we're going to add a width of 100 percent let's take a look and th this is all we're going to do with this and as you can see it goes out there a bit and we are only going to animate the opacity on these things and here but again see if i would just add opacity zero to this and animate it back in we would lose even the background color so if i separate this that's why we created basically the two divs in here the uh, section and the home content is just so we can get the background color just staying here. And now what we can do is just position these with the home content. So down here we can use home content and we can just display flex like so. We can justify content space. Let's do space evenly and we can add an align items center to this. Let's take a look. And as you can see, way better. Let's make this also smaller because it's huge. So we can just do it in here, the image, because we're using SAS and we're awesome. Uh, we can add a height of like 70%. Let's take a look at how that looks. It's not working. Let's make it smaller. Actually, the thing is, we kind of need to add a height of 100% to this home content. So it takes the size of this home. Okay, so the 90 VH, we need to make sure we add that. And now, as you can see, it works. So I kind of like that size, 70% looks good. Let's make these bigger a bit. We can just go back, where am I going? I'm, I'm losing myself. H1 and just make the font size like 50 pixels. We can add a margin to this. I, I kind of want just top and bottom. I don't want left and right. So we can just do like, like nah, I don't know, 30 pixels and we can leave zero here. This is only gonna affect top and bottom and this is only gonna affect left and right. If you only have one like this, it affects everything. Right, left, top, bottom, everything. Data route wrapper. <laughs> okay, there we go, looks way better. And then here we can do another P and just make this a bit bigger as well, 20 pixels. There we go, looks good. Okay, and now we can just create the, if we go here, we can just create the about HTML outside here. I'm just gonna create about.html and I can just copy most of the things from, from the index. So let's go here. I'm actually gonna get everything and copy it, paste it here, and then we're gonna fix up a few things. So this, everything should be fine here. I'm gonna change the title to about. Uh, actually, the thing is we don't need a nav because the only thing that's gonna change is this section. So you can imagine that when we do the page transition, this section just gets plopped out of here and it's gonna be placed in here. The nav is gonna remain, everything is gonna remain. So in here, just remove the nav and let's just change this home to about, so the image, and here we can say about page, and we can say learn more about page transitions. Perfect, I'm also gonna change the section name uh, from class home to about, and the data router view to about. We can do everything here, home content too, to about content, about presentation, and about here. So just change everything from home to about. Perfect, hit save, get out of here. And now what we can do is, actually we need to go to the nav in the index.html. I'm 
dying here. Okay, there we go, index.html. I'm just gonna add the href here so we can navigate. Uh, let's go to, so the home is gonna stay on the index.html and the about is gonna go all the way to about.html. And that's it, save. This is everything is good here. Perfect. Now, if we go to about.html, this is how it looks currently, which is not good. And what we can do is we can just kind of apply all these styles where we have home. So home, we can add about, dot about. Hit save. We can do about content here. Hit save. And here we can also do the about and get another background color. For the second gradient, we're gonna use this heavy rain. It's gonna be the 13th one. Uh, yeah, so we can just copy this, go back here, and we can just add it down here. Hit save, let's take a look. Go back to our about. Now, as you can see here, we don't have the nav bar, but that's fine. So we can navigate back just by deleting about.html, and we can go back here. Now, don't worry, that's gonna stay here when we do the page transition. So now, as you can see, it disappears. So let's go back here, so our, whoa. All right, someone's racing out there. What's your car? We're trying to learn page transitions here. All right, and that's all we need. We can get started by creating the page transition. So here, the beautiful thing about highway.js is we can make separate files for each transition that we want to do. We can just kind of separate everything in their own classes. So if you want to have multiple transitions, multiple styles of transitions, you can create one file specific to each transition. So let's do one. I'm going to do, this one's going to be basic. We're going to call it just transition for now .js, okay? Because we're only going to do one in this video. And in here, what we can do is we can import the packages that we're using. So import, we're going to import highway from, and we can do uh, doc studio highway, okay? Close this up. And we can also import gsap. So we can do tween from gsap. And actually, I just want the timeline light for this. So you can extract things. If I go here, as you can see, here are all the files. And I, I just kind of want the timeline light here. That's going to be sufficient for this one. So to get that, we can actually use object deconstruction in JavaScript. So the way we just write, we just add the curly braces and we write timeline light. There it is, 39 kilobytes. Perfect. All right, these are the two we need. Now, how can we create a transition? So we can just do a class. We can do, let's do fade. Let's call it fade. And we can do extends highway dot transition. All right, so we just create a class and we inherit all the transition functionalities from highway. Okay, so now we can just make our own kind of things here it takes two methods. One is called in and one is called out, like so. And what this basically is, the in is going to be responsible for the page that's coming in and out is going to be responsible for the page that's going out. So in our case, the in is going to be the about page. So from the home page, when we click on the about, the ones that, that's coming in is the about, and the one that's going out is the index.html. Perfect. And here we can actually get different things. So we can do object deconstruction again, so we can do the curly braces, and we have access to come something called from, to, and done. And here we have something called from and done. Let me add a comma here. Now from here is gonna be index.html. To, well, where are we going to? We're going to about.html. And done is gonna be the function that we're gonna to have to call to say that this animation is finished. Okay, so we always have to call done when we finish the transition. Now, since we kind of don't want to animate the index.html, okay, we want this to stay the same here. We just want the line to come in and then to kind of open up. And that's why we can just call done here. And when this is called, then it goes into the in. So if we want to also do animations to this, this page, so it like fades out or it gets smaller, then we can do our animations in here. But since we're not doing anything to this, this one that's going out, then we're just going to call done. 
And in here, in the in, so the about that's coming in, we can do all of our animations. I know this is a bit confusing, I'm sorry, but it, it takes a bit and once you get it, it's, it's very easy. So here we can just create a cons timeline. And we can use GSAP if you're not familiar. You can watch my tutorial, I covered it. Uh, we cover timeline and tween light. And here we can just do new timeline light, like so. And here we can just add animations. We can do TL from two. And now what I wanna animate, I wanna animate the two, okay? The container that's coming in, the about. And what I want to do with this? Well, I can add the duration of the animation. I'm going to add 0.5 seconds. And here we can add the properties if we create an object of the things, uh, the from and then the to. So I want it to start from left. I'm going to add 100% minus 100%. So it's out of screen. So this is kind of the starting point I want it to start from. And top, 50%. Make sure to add the strings here because I want it to also start from the middle. Perfect, and now the second object is gonna tell it where to go. So this is the starting position and here is where it's gonna go. Left, it's gonna go to 0%. All right, that's the first one I want. The second one from two is, again, I'm gonna get the two object. We're gonna say 0.5. And now I want to animate. So again, this just kind of moves it into the center. And now I want it to expand like that. So that's why we can do another from two. And in here, I want it to start from a height of like two VH. So very, very small. Again, make sure to add strings here. And I want it to expand all the way to 90%, 90 VH, because we have the nav bar. Remember that's 10 VH. So make sure we don't override that one. And also, I'm gonna add a top of 10%, like so. And the reason why we're gonna do this is if we don't, then it's just gonna expand like this, from this position, from top 50, all the way down, and it's gonna go out of screen. So if we also move the top, it's, it kinda looks like it expands in both ways, which is really cool. So let's just hit save for now, and let's see how this looks. Now, to actually get this started, we can go back to our index.html and we need to, to kind of start up Highway.js. We kind of need to execute this function. So import, we're going to import Highway again from Doc Studio, around Doc Studio, and we can import our fade from transition, like so. Now, to execute it, we're going to just make a const h from highway. It's going to set equal to new highway.core. And again, this is just a way that we need to use to execute everything we have, our transitions, our renderers, which I'm going to cover later on. And again, you know, we had names, so we have home. We can kind of just add different transitions for different pages. So we added about here. As you can see, the data router view, we added different names to them. So we can have custom transitions to each one of them, maybe a slide here. But for now, let's keep it simple. I'm going to add a transitions. This is going to be an object. And we can just add a default. And we can set it to this fade. So all of our pages are going to have that default of fade. But again, this is super customizable. And if you want to learn more about this, let me know. Or I'm going to also link the docs down below. If it's not working, if we open up the terminal again, as you can see, it's installing some stuff, Babel core and other things because we use classes. Uh, so it's gonna install the necessary packages and even GSAP and everything uh, to make this work. So we might have to wait a bit. So don't panic if you, <laughs> if you see this and it's like not working. Well, as you can see, building Twimax and all the other packages. Now we might still have a few issues with this. And one of them is we need to make sure that we do export default fade here because I didn't export it. So when we were importing it here, we kind of let it know what to use. So after we do that, I think it's still not going to work. So it's going to throw us an error here. Done is not a function. So let's delete this and go back. Another important thing is in our transition here, we call done. Well, we never called it in here. 
So when do we know when to call done here? Because if we call it up here, then it's going to finish it. And we don't want this. We want it to finish it as soon as the animation ends. And another great reason about GSAP is we have something called on complete here. And this only runs, so we can add a function here, this only runs when our animation is over. So we can call done right in here. Hit save, hit about, and it's still not working because it says done is not a function. So why is it not a function? I believe I did not deconstructure this, so let's take a look. And yes, make sure to use curly braces around this and deconstructure it, and then it should work. So let's go back again, hit about, as you can see, we have the animation going. Now, the problem is we also need to remove the container. So when we go on about, let's take a look at what's going on here. As you can see, we have multiple homes and abouts, and that's not good. Let's go back here again. Okay, so if I expand the main nav, we have the section, and we have the home here. Go to about. We have the about, but this home never gets removed. So how do we remove that? Well after our animation ends we want to get the from so the current container you can say from and besides calling done we can also ca uh, call remove and this is just going to remove the container that we are on so let's take a look here main we have home we go to about as you can see after it's done it also removes the container so now everything is nice. Now there are a few problems with this, which we're gonna fix. Uh, one of them is we kind of want to transition this out and we kind of want to get rid of the opacity of this so it doesn't look so weird. So let's go back here. And so we have this one from two and to make it easier for you to see, we can close this up. We have from two, from two. And after this, let's go right here. So make sure to click here to see where the last from two is. And up, down below here, we can do another from two. And what we can do is we can get the two and we can get the children and zero. So the first array of zero children. And what that is, is if we go back here, it's gonna be, this is the, I'm confused. This is the two, <laughs> this is the two section and this will be the first child of it. So if I say two dot children, it's gonna be this, and zero is gonna be the first child, so the home content, okay? Um, two children, so this is what I wanna select, and I want zero, let's do one second here, animation, or two, and we can do from opacity, zero, and then what I can do is say opacity, one hit save let's take a look about there we go that's it so thank you very much for joining me today hope you enjoyed this animation i also made a new instagram uh, where i'm going to post kind of snippets and different things about this channel so if you're interested it's down in the comments down below next to also twitter if you want to hear some updates and news and random stupid memes i post and drop a sub here as well and stop at it's too much and that's it for me today. I cannot believe we are almost at 5,000 subscribers. Jesus Christ. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Data router rapper. Data router rapper.